And here we are, me and Tash in LA. So the plan here is to have a look at the advertising board for Winnie the Pooh 2 movie. Just for a bit of fun. So we're going to get some footage now of the guys in front of the Winnie boards. Yes, we are. We're going to get videos of them jumping in and. We're going to see what we can see. So if you enjoy sure. it. Have what else are we doing tonight, Chopper? I don't know what we are doing tonight. Is there anything to do? I don't know. What? I wanted to go to that strip club with the male strippers, but... Really? Oh, I don't know if I should be going there. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I should be the one stripping. <laughs> well, hey, well, I've got a lot of likes. And he's going to become yeah. a stripper. I'll get up there. Um, show, show them around quick there, do you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, like what? That's it. <laughs> the wild stay. <laughs> in the wild. Right, guys. No, they're, they're over there, Chop. They're over there. Oh, shit. I've got a spot patch on. As you can see. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, he's going. We're going. Come on, let's go. Leg it, leg it, leg it. We are allowed to walk. Let's go. It says stop, it says don't strap running. <laughs> oh god. Right, we made it. <laughs> oh, it's gone. It's gone. Yay! You missed it, Chub. <laughs> is that it? That's, That's it. it. Is it? That's it. Go on, Chub again. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know where Oh, I missed that, Lewis. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again, Lewis. Ready, ready? Yeah, go on. Then, on to the movie. The first night. We were going to be there, but it's too much. And on the first night, there was actually two premieres. Some of the guys were in one cinema on the other side of town, and we were in this one. So Scott and Reese were talking to the fans, which I thought was a really good touch. Thank you so much for coming out and supporting this film. It means the world to us. And the support that we got from the first one was so crazy and unexpected. It was, it was just a whirlwind for us. And that support allowed us and opened doors for us to make this film on a better budget. So there's a lot of things which have improved in the sequel compared to the first film. Uh, so all of the characters have had a complete redesign. So you can see something behind me. We had Winnie One going into Winnie Two. Uh, you also see Lil Poo there, he features in the film. Poo's also brought along a few new friends. We expand out on the lore of the creatures too, and there's a lot of death. Um, in the end of this movie, it's about 20 minutes solid, and there was so much I had to cut about six or seven death scenes. Uh, so look out for them on the DVD. This movie is going to be kickstarting a new universe for us. Uh, so we have a variety of films which we'll be filming throughout this year. Um, and some of them are Peter Pan's Neverland Nightmare. Which I'm directing. Um, the tone of Peter Pan, I would say, probably the most dark of all the films that we're developing at the moment. It's very twisted. I've been very much inspired by the Black Phone and French cinema such as Inside, which made romance. They've been favourites of mine for years and years and years. Team Cabell will be appearing in the movie. She believes that heroin is uh, pixie dust. Why not? The original story of Guy going to Windows, layering children out, saying you can take them to Neverland. We'll be working on Pinocchio yeah. and Shrek. Uh, so that will be filming pro approximately in September mm -hmm. this year. Um, and with this version of Pinocchio, he's going to be similar to like Chucky. Uh, we're actually talking to the creator of Chucky, uh, Todd Masters, to um, design the new puppet for us. Uh, which is very exciting. Um, Pinocchio, he's going to have a kind of telescopic nose coming out, uh, which he can use to kill people. Um, and at one point in the film, he's actually going to skin someone and wear their skin to kind of feel like a real, real boy. boy. So yeah, very dark as well. I'm going to fast forward to the best bit of the film. Now, if you look really carefully, you're going to see me and Tash in the next scene. Be 
Hot sauce. Oh my god, we tried it. And we'll be in Steve over there tried it. He's filming us right now. And yeah, honestly, I thought that was the end for Tigger. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see it is not the end for Tigger. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, guys, make sure you like the That's a Rap Hot Sauce Challenge video. Because if we get 100 likes, Tasha has got to take the bomb sauce. You get on set, I'm quite a jokey person, I'm quite like, energetic, I'm like, hey, how's it going, how's it going? And then now I've got to like, play this absolute demon, and then it's like, I need to get into that hit space, you kind of sit there, and they're not really talking, they're sort of doing their thing, sticking bits on you and stuff like that, and I'm just sat there, like, playing sort of like, heavy metal music into my head, it's just to get into that mindset. Um, and then, yeah, and then seeing yourself, it is, it's weird, like, I've always wanted to work with prosthetics, ever since, like, I watched it in 2017, I've always said as an actor, I want to be in prosthetics and just lose myself completely in the character, because it's fully immersed in, like, you're completely gone. Um, so I really, yeah, it's weird looking in the mirror, and then once you get used to it, it's really weird. Like, see, it's like a 12 hour shoot, and then they rip you out of it, and it's just this normal guy there. And you're like, oh, that guy, like, I don't like that guy anymore. Like, I want to be this demonic tiger man now. <laughs> I was like, oh, not here. So, yeah, I really got used to it, and I was always like looking at selfies on my phone, like taking pictures and stuff, and thinking, yeah, like, I wish I was always like this. <laughs> yeah. That is great. I can't wait to see you in Waluigi prosthetics after that. Oh, I'm Waluigi. Yeah. Waluigi, yeah. <laughs> That's not a good idea. All right, next question. Oh, yes, go ahead. So you had a fine time with prosthetics, it sounds like, but did, did it, would it, was anybody like claustrophobic? Because there's so many like latex horror stories from classic horror. Was yeah. Yeah, I don't know if anyone else struggled with it. I didn't find it too bad, to be fair. Like, the hearing was the only thing. Like, in, like, conversations, like, not so much for the filming, because kind of you're in the zone and you're sort of just doing your thing and killing and stuff. But for, like, conversations on the set, that's what made it hard. Like, at lunchtime, <laughs> and you're just eating, like, your rice and chicken, and people are talking to you, and I've, like, got no idea what they're saying. Um, but, yeah, the only claustrophobic thing was really the, the process of getting, like, the, the mould made of your face. So like a month before, I had to go up to Barnsley in England, and it was the same guys who do like Voldemort and Mad Eye Moody for Harry Potter. So I was just geeking out in their warehouse, and they were just then putting like paper mache sort of silicone on your head, and that was quite claustrophobic. It's like a forty-five minute process, and you're completely covered. You got these two little nostril holes, and that's it. Um, but you're sort of just meditating in there. I remember just being like, just stay calm, just deep breaths, and stuff like that. That's the only time I was a bit claustrophobic. But with the prosthetics on, no, I just felt like I was. It just helps so much with the character. Like when you look at your hands and you've got these claws and these stripy hands and stuff, then I loved it, to be honest, yeah. I, I, I met them at the, 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 the couple who did the prosthetics and, and a lot of the effects. I met them in London. Obviously, yeah. they were at the premiere. Mm -hmm. And I was picking their brain because it's so fascinating to me. And they were saying, like, because of, I mean, it, we had so, they had much more money than the first one, but it was still only $400,000, which for a film is like nothing still, right? So they were really smart. They were telling me about how they planned out the shape of the head in order to get it on quick because when you're working on low budget things, like time is money. So how do we get Lewis into Tigger in only two hours instead of eight hours for Jim Carrey on, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. It was just four bits. It's like a hood that goes over you that covers like, the whole back of your head. It comes down to like here in your chest and then there's like three other parts, so, like a forehead piece, a chin piece. Uh, the mid part of your face that's what's covered so it's not too bad and it's just quite cool to be fair because like there's all these different things going on in the last it's the eye holes i keep saying this it feels like darth vader in revenge of the sith when he's getting that mask coming like towards his face and then now it's stuck on like right now it's ready to you know ready to play <laughs> so how did how do your parents or family or friends like can they watch other stuff can they watch this movie um, um my mom is super religious <laughs> <laughs> so yeah she Devo won't be watching this, but I, I'm, gonna afford, I'm gonna afford her the clips anyway, just for the bands. Um But yeah, she was like super, like, mm, are you sure? But um, 
me and my sister watch horrors a lot together, so I feel like my sister kind of, my dad also was really on my side, he was like, it's just a job, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I've had a lot of fun doing it, and I think she's happy for me now that she understands that I've, I've had a lot of fun doing it, I, I'm passionate about it. My mum doesn't care, to be fair. <laughs> she, actually, like, she pretty much enjoys it. My dad likes it as well. Everyone loves it, really. And uh, we do have some sure. posters up here if you're interested. But I will say this, if you ask a question tonight, uh, you can come up first and get a poster, and then we'll go ahead and hand out after that. And if you're interested in more conversations with everyone up on the stage, make sure you sign in. I have sorry. interviews with every single person on the stage on my YouTube channel, Fifty Shades of Tape. So thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. Thank you. Excellent, thank you very much. That's actually quite good. And then on to the after show party where I had quite a funny arm wrestling match with some of the locals. So on the second night, all the cast that were in LA and the crew were actually at this cinema, which was good. So there was more people talking, and I'll show you some clips from uh, Scott and Reese. <laughs> Um, out there in knowledge, it says a million. It was three hundred fifty thousand pounds, um, and it does mean that you can't rely on anyone. You have to just do it all yourself. And I think it was really stressful. Um, Reese, um, I really, really, really think he is so special. Um, he threw up one day out of stress. That's not even a joke. Like this was so hard, mate. Probably harder than the first film. So yeah, it was hell. And I, oh yeah. I was ill, yeah, so thanks to that production designer, I got sick, not from flu, but from stress. And you know, like, the, the scenes in the therapy room, that was my first day. And I, the lady I was opposite, she's so nice, she's called Teresa, the therapist. Um, and I was like, oh, you're really, really nice, but I'm, like, really ill. And I kept falling asleep in the chair, and then you were like, we've got a frame up, and I was like, can't be bothered. <laughs> How did you feel after the first one went so viral, and what did you bring to the sequel that you had learned from the first film? Yeah, so like Scott was saying, we um, had a very limited time frame in terms of like writing the script and shooting it. Um, we were producing so many films, and with the first one, we sh um, I wrote the script for it in about three days, um, because there was a problem with the existing script, and we, we were shooting in about four weeks. So I was like, okay, I just need to write something now. So I kind of rushed it out. Um, and initially, it was only for like a VOD or DVD market. Um, so we didn't really appreciate the sort of scale it was going to go to, so you can kind of get like 60% there and just rush it out kind of. But then it blew up, like Scott was saying, and then it was about trying to like patch over it a little bit and like make it as good as we could. Um, but then with the sequel, we kind of appreciate the kind of scale it's going to, you know, it's going theatrically worldwide. Um, and then I thought, okay, I don't want to get tied in to all of the elements we fixed in the first film. Um, so for example, the look of the creatures, um, so of Winnie and kind of all those other elements, like some of the actors we had in there and bits, I thought there's so much I wanted to reinvent that it kind of seemed like it makes sense to make the first film within a film within a film. Um, so we could do like a little quasi reboot kind of with it. Um, so there's still some link between them, but we're almost at a fresh slate. And then I got Matt involved, um, so as a screenwriter, and me and him for about one, one or two months, we were brainstorming, weren't we? And just, yeah, I think about that long, yeah. Yeah, yeah. On, like, and the first thing we did after the um, the first one went viral is there's so much, and the film was released, there's so much useful information out there uh, because everyone was seeing the film, everyone was telling us, you know, we want this, we want that. It's like, what characters do we want next? Um, and everyone was like, Tigger. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. so we knew loads of elements we needed to integrate. We had a big like PowerPoint presentation of all like the 
um, must-haves, kind of wants and bids, and then me and you just started drilling into it for like two months, didn't we? Yeah. For like one or two months of just planning out what scenes would work, like poo sticks, it was like everyone, I think everyone would love to see a kind of dark version of the poo sticks, so hence why that was on there. So, yeah, that's kind of what we learned. Just start again. <laughs> Universe. 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 Excellent. I made it. I made it on time, guys. I missed the entire film, but I got there for the Q and A, and they let me in. And because we're in LA, and because we're at Universal Studios Cinema, literally just within walking distance is the Universal Studios theme park. We had to go to it. We are in Universal Studios at the moment. We're doing a studio tour. We're in the, I think. Harry Potter land yeah, at the definitely, moment. Definitely Harry Potter. Never seen it, so I won't know. But there's Never a seen lot Potter. To see. No, I haven't. Well, so you're going to be seeing it all, guys. You're going to see all of it. So be excited to see everything. Look at that. What? Look at that ball there. Look. Uh, Turn it up to me. Me and Chopper are going to get getting pissed in there later when everyone's watching Winnie the Pooh for the 100th time. Is that where we're going, is it? Weird, you. Another one? Oh, it's bad, isn't it? <laughs> right, let's, let's keep going. There'll be more we'll, we'll, we'll find somewhere. Let's keep going, shall we? Let's keep going, shall we? Yes, we shall. And at the theme park where we went on the Universal Studios tour, which was a ride which lasted about an hour, you know, it was really good. We got to see some of the sets and also it becomes a ride in itself. when I saw Waterworld. Now Waterworld was a, a big movie in the 90s that flopped commercially, but the Universal Studios show is still running now. Get down!
This way. Chop, chop, come on. We've done Springfield, which we're going back to. Yeah, we'll do that one. Yeah, this is the way, Chop. I don't know. So I saw the signs. <laughs> this is definitely the right way. No, it's the right way. Here we are. What are we doing, everyone? We're on the Jurassic, oh! the Jurassic World ride. We're on the Jurassic World ride, and this is the walk home. Oh, oh my we're God. Going up. We're fully we're going up. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this, I'm guys. Oh, oh, shit. Should I leave the camera on, huh? <laughs> we have a sight for sunrise. Sad sight. It's yeah. quite damn in a dark place. In a dark place. What's just happened? We we just bought dr drinks, alcohol, and we the, thought we could just make a wave to the Q and A. And they said we had to drink it before we left, so we just had to darn it. My belly's all the way fucked. They wouldn't let us leave. <laughs> the chopper. Really, they had us hostage. Chopper just had a duff beer in about ten seconds. <laughs> yeah, I did. For a little job. I did. I'm ashamed of Spain. <laughs> Honestly, like. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> she can't take it. She can't take it. She's I can't struggling. Take it. I can't take it. Look at my hat though. That's very good. Oh. The kid has rushed off lot. She's panicking because oh, yeah. she's in the Q&A. <laughs> don't, <She's... rush, laughs> don't leave her behind me, Chopper. Oh, no, come on. Let's... She, she, she must be panicking. Come on. I'm panicking, Chopper. So, in the recently announced universe, yeah. Tigger's coming. He's, he's coming. And uh, what do you want to see him do in the future? So, we've been talking recently and me and Rosie about like, ideas for Tigger and we said like he sort of uses his claws a lot, like, he doesn't really use weapons, he's got his claws, but we want to see him like eat more and like drink more blood and stuff, like he's got the teeth there, why not use them more? I think like I eat eyeballs in this film and that's it, so like actually in the original script it did have me snap on someone's leg and suck all the blood out uh, of this leg and of this foot and I remember getting really like, psyched for that idea and it's never happened because we had like, other ideas for kills, 
something in the in the universe I'd love him to like just eat more people. Like he's a tiny, you know, he gets hungry, that's what they do. So why not, you know, take that and, and use that idea. Um, do you want him to start with the head or with the feet? Where would you have him start? Ooh, so you can be like a vampire, you go straight to the throat or like no 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 actually no, I'll go back on that. Because he's sadistic, I think he'd start from the feet. Like he wants them to endure as much pain as possible before they die. So I think like toes, feet, legs, everything goes up until the throat, yeah. Make it as long as like as long as possible. He's sadistic, so you know he loves it. <laughs> he's got like so he's gonna be more grounded with that one. Like I know like some people in there will be like, Oh this should all be stupid. But like, you know, he is an old guy breaking into houses, abducting children, so naturally that ain't funny. So um, <laughs> I'm taking it a bit more serious. So I'm just going with what I like love as a horror fan. So I'm a massive fan of like French cinema, so it's like, like I think over here it's called high tension. So I'm taking reference from that and um, Hounds of Love, which is a really good Australian film, and then Black Phone. So it is a mix of those and with my own thing on top. But yeah, it's going to be really dark. Yeah, as I said in the intro, um, Tinkerbell is addicted to heroin and she thinks it's, it's pixie dust. So I'm definitely remixing it. Um, I don't really know what I can say to this because it's it, like, yeah, we, we're going to announce Drews and Drabs, but yeah, it's going to be dark as hell. And, Wendy's gonna go through it, so you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Peter Pan's got. I can't say too much more. Like, but he's gonna be half his face gonna be like messed up. But um, yeah, you'll see. I'll I'll release some pictures when we're filming, and I'm very 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 excited about it. Uh, I think I went to college with the Tinker Bell that you're talking about. <laughs> I'm a little familiar. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> <right now. laughs> yeah, okay, cool. And so recent Scott and the recently announced Cooniverse. Hmm. Uh, Monsters Assemble. Can you talk about that a little bit and just tease some of what's to come and how you guys came up with that idea? Yeah, so um, we've got all the individual films which we're shooting first. So we've had obviously like Pooh, Bandy's already been shot, so he's obviously these are about to come in post. Pete has next. Um, after that, we've got Pinocchio on Strong. Um, so we've got the creator of Chucky Tom Masters, he's going to be making the doll for us. Um, so we're really excited for that. I mean, um, and then after we've done all those individual films is when we'll go into the universe. And it kind of stemmed from us thinking how fun it would have been to see Pooh riding Bambi. While we were just Bambi, we were just like imagining Pooh riding him, and then it just started growing from there. Yeah, like swing his bear trap like a cowboy. And we've, we've got to make this happen. <laughs> but also, it is also like I, like, I truly am a horror fan. Like, since I was about seven, I've been watching horrors with my older brother and stuff. And I've always wanted to see a film where it's like, uh, Leatherface, Hellraiser, Scream, all of them. I want to see them when they're all in a film together. That will never obviously happen because they're all owned by different you know, production companies. But we can do that. So we were like, yeah. that was a big thing when I would make films that we actually want to see ourselves. Yeah, so it's a bit like, um, like we love like Freddy vs. Jason. Um, so we're trying to have those sort of like elements in there. And you can kind of probably see from like who to that, each of the individual characters, there's almost a little bit of like homage to some of like the slasher greats in there. Uh, so obviously particularly you've got Freddy with like Pooh, he's got a bit of a mannerism like Jason, like Myers, um, and Piglet's a little bit never facey, and then Owl's got like a bit of pinhead in him, because he just loves to monologue at people before he like pokes their eyes out. And then I thought I'd end it by showing some pictures. The three of us here on the mummy ride. That was so much fun. If you can see us there, we're having a good time, you can tell. Um, we also went on the Simpsons ride. <laughs> I think we're all fed up of it at the end there. Um, we had a little day out as well to Santa Monica Pier, which was which was nice. The sun had just come out as well, which was good. And there's a picture of me in the background of the Winnie the Pooh ad. And, yeah, I was having a meal on Rodeo Drive. <laughs>